thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Our Lady Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, all of you who can. Dear priests, dear friends in Christ, At the beginning of this meeting today, I would like to greet you all from the bottom of my heart. My desire is that in this short period of time that we're going to spend together to share with you what's the most important and the most important messages that Our Lady has been inviting us to. You know yourselves that through this period of 31 years that Our Lady has given us many messages. But today, I would like to concentrate on the most important messages. And I would like to share with you a little bit more about those messages. But before I start talking about messages, I would like to say a few words of introduction. At the beginning of the apparitions, back in 1981, already on the second day of the apparitions, Our Lady says, Dear children, I come to you, for I desire to tell you that God exists. Decide for Him. Walk together with him. Put Jesus in the first place in your life. In a special way, dear children, put Jesus in the first place in your families. We see from these words that Our Lady's desire, that her desire is for her to guide us all to her Son, for in Him can we find our peace. The Mother has come to us because she desires to help us all. She desires to take us out of this dead-end street. She desires to take us out of this darkness. And she desires to guide us on the way of light, peace, and hope. The Mother has come to us as the Mother of Hope. She desires to bring hope into today's tired world. She desires to bring hope back into our today's tired families 
in all the messages that she has been giving. She's been giving the messages for the entire world. She desires to guide us all. There are no rejected ones by her. She does not care about the color of our skin. She is the mother, and we are her children. You see, always when Our Lady gives us the messages, always her first words, and all the time her first words are, my dear children, because she is the mother, because she loves us all. And at the end of every message, she gives thanks. She says, thank you, dear children, for having responded to my call. Today, Our Lady desires to give us thanks. She desires to say to us the same, the same words, the same sentence. Thank you, dear children, for having said yes. Thank you for having responded to my call. Dear children, thank you for you're helping me in the realizations of my plans. My dear friends, many of you have come here tired, tired of this world, tired of the rhythm of life that today's world has imposed on us. You have come here, many of you, hungry, hungry for peace, hungry for love, hungry for truth. And in, in a special way, we have come here hungry for God. We have come here to a spring. We have come here to the spring to have rest here, to run into the embrace of our mother, to say to her, Mother, pray for us and intercede before your son for each one of us. Jesus says in the gospel, Come to me, all of you who are tired and burdened, and I shall give you rest, and I will give you strength. We have come here to Jesus to find peace in him, to find rest in him. Through this period of uh, 31 years, years of the apparitions. Truly, for my life and for myself, this has been a huge gift. But at the same time, it's a great responsibility. I know that God has granted me a lot, but I also know that he asks a lot of me. I'm fully aware of the responsibility that I have. And I live my life and every single day of my life with that responsibility. I don't want you to look at me and see me today as a saint man, as a saint, as a holy man, because I'm not. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be holier. And that is my desire. That desire is deeply imprinted into my heart. And for sure, I did not have overnight conversion just because of the fact that I can see Our Lady. I know that my conversion is a process, a program for my life. 
that I have to decide for, that I have to be persistent in, and into which I have to change myself every day, every day to leave sin and evil behind, and to open to peace, and to open to the Holy Spirit, and in that way to grow in holiness. But there is one question that every single day I ask myself during this period of 31 years. And the question is, Mother, why me? Mother, were there any better than me? Mother, will I be able to do all what you ask of me to do? Mother, are you pleased with me? Are you happy with me? And in this period of 31 years, every day, I ask myself, myself these questions. I remember well during one of the apparitions with Our Lady, I asked Our Lady, Mother, why me? Why did you choose me? And Our Lady smiled and said, Dear children, you know, I'm not always looking for the best ones. Thirty-one years ago, Our Lady chose me. She chose me to be her instrument. An instrument in her hands and in the hands of God. Believe me, it's not easy and it's not simple. To be with Our Lady every day. To speak to her every day. To be with her in that light of heaven every day. And then after meeting her, to come back to live the reality of this world here on the earth. Every day, when Our Lady comes, she brings that peace of heaven with her. If you were able to see Our Lady just for one second, just one second only, I don't know if after that second your life here on the earth would be at all interesting. Every day after the meeting with Our Lady, every day I need few hours of time to come back to the reality of this world and to live life here. What is the most important and what are the most important messages that Our Lady has been inviting us to? In a special way, I would like to emphasize the following messages. Through these messages, Our Lady has been guiding us. The message of peace, conversion, prayer with the heart, penance and fasting, firm faith, love, forgiveness, Eucharist, reading of the sacred scripture and the message of hope. You see, the messages that in a special way I emphasize now would be the most important messages that Our Lady has been guiding us through. At the beginning of the very, at the very beginning of the apparitions, Our Lady introduces herself. When we asked her, Who are you? She responds, I am the Queen of Peace. 
I come, dear children, for my son is sending me. I desire to help you, dear children. Peace, peace, and only peace. Let peace be. Let peace reign throughout the world, dear children. Peace must reign between God and man and among people themselves. I desire to repeat once more these words because they are especially important in this time that we live in. Dear children, peace must reign between God and man and among people themselves, dear children. Dear children, this world, this mankind, is in a great danger, and it's in danger to destroy itself. From these words, from these first messages, we can see what the greatest desire of Our Lady is, and that is peace. The Mother comes to us from the King of Peace. And who can know better but the Mother? How much peace today is needed in this tired mankind? How much peace today's tired families are in need of? And how much peace today's tired youth are in need of? And how much peace today's tired church needs. The mother has been coming to us. And she's been coming as the mother of the church. And she says, Dear children, if you are strong, the church will be strong too. If you are weak, the church will be weak too. Dear children, you are my living church. Dear children, in a special way I invite you to bring the prayer back into your families. Dear children, let every family of yours become a prayer group. Let every family of yours become a chapel where people pray. Dear children, Dear children, there is no living church without the living family. Family today is the foundation of a new society. If the family is spiritually sick, then society is sick too. The world is sick too. That is why Our Lady has been inviting us so much to the renewal of the family and of the family prayer. Many families today live their lives in an empty way. They are spiritually empty, without peace, without love. And our mother has been in a special way inviting us to prayer. Our mother desires to fill all what is empty. She desires to protect us from Satan. In a special way, a lady invites us to pray in our families. For through the family prayer, more vocations will be born in the church. Only with the prayer in the family will we see 
that there will be more vocations in the church before because God calls through families through family prayer priests are born our mother has been coming to us because she desires to console us and give us comfort She's been coming to us and bringing us a divine cure. She desires to heal our wounds, to heal our pain and dress our wounds. In a special way, wounds in the families. Because the family of today is bleeding. And our mother has been coming to us and she brings the cure and she desires to heal us with so much gentleness, with so much tenderness and with so much love. She's been coming to us and she desires to guide us to Jesus. In one of the messages our Lady said, Dear children, today more than ever, today's world, today's mankind is going through difficult crises. And the greatest crisis is the crisis of faith in God. Because people distanced themselves from God. We distanced ourselves from prayer. Dear children, today's world, today's mankind desires to walk towards future without God. Dear children, prayer nowadays is gone from your families. In the families, members of the families do not have time for each other anymore. Parents do not have time for children. Children do not have time for their parents. The father does not have time for the mother, and the mother does not have time for the father either. Love is gone from our families. There is no more fidelity in the marriage anymore. Morality is falling apart. There are so many broken and tired families. There are so many abortions. The dignity of the unborn is destroyed. The mother has come to us. She desires to call us all. She calls us to return to God to put God in the first place in our lives. Our mother has been coming to us and she's been saying to us, Dear children, if there is no peace in one, one man's heart, if one is not at peace with himself or herself, if there is no peace in the families, then their children there can't be any peace in the world. Therefore, I invite you. I invite you all to not talk about peace, but start living peace. Do not talk about prayer, but start living the prayer. Dear children, in this world of today, there are too many words spoken. That's why I invite you, talk less and, and work more on yourselves, work more on your families, dear children. Only with the return of family prayer into your families can your 
family be spiritually healed. Today's world is in need of a spiritual healing. Today's world is spiritually sick. In this time that we live in, that we live, often we can see on TV, on the radio, or we read in the papers, everyone is talking about crisis, about economic crisis, about recession. The world today, nowadays, is not in economic recession only. Today's world, today's society, is in a spiritual crisis. Because every spiritual recession produces, generates every other kind of crisis. And our mother has come to us and she desires to lift this sinful mankind up. She is worried about our salvation. And she says, Dear children, I am with you. I come to you because I desire to help you to have peace. But dear children, I need you. I need you. Our Lady needs us. With you can I realize my plans, she says. That's why, she says, decide for good and fight against evil and fight against sin. Mother speaks in a simple way. She repeats so many times, and she never gets tired. I believe it's the same with you mothers present here. How many times have you said to your children, study, work, don't do this, it's not good for you. Be good, behave yourself. Thousands and thousands of times you've repeated these words to your children. Are you tired yet? Have you got tired yet? I believe not. Is there a single mother, mother present here who could say that she is so fortunate that she had to repeat only once something to her children and never ever had to repeat it again? I believe there isn't such a mother. Because mothers have to repeat. The mother has to repeat so that the children do not forget. And it's the same with Our Lady and us. Our mother did not come to bring us fear. She did not come to criticize us or to talk about the end of the world about the second coming of Jesus. No, she has come as the mother of hope. In a special way, she's been inviting us to Holy Mass. And she says, Dear children, let Holy Mass be the center of your life. During one of the apparitions, six of us children are kneeling before Our Lady. And Our Lady says to us, she says, dear children, if tomorrow you have to make a decision to come to me, to meet me, or to go to Holy Mass, children, don't come to me. Go to Holy Mass. Because to go to Holy Mass means to go 
to Mass in which Jesus is giving himself to us. It means to surrender, surrender ourselves to him, to open ourselves to him, to receive him. In a special way, in this last 31 years, a lady has been inviting us to monthly confession, to venerate the Holy Cross, and to adore the Blessed Sacrament. In a special way, she's been inviting priests to start adorations in their parishes, adorations before the Blessed Sacrament, that they organize adorations and guide them. A lady has been inviting us to the prayer of the rosary in our families, to read the sacred scripture in our families. And she says, Dear children, let the Bible be on a visible place in every family home of yours. Read the sacred scripture. Let the reading of the sacred scripture be a nourishment on the pathway of your life. Forgive one another, love one another. In a special way, I would like to emphasize the invitation to forgiveness. Our Lady has been inviting us so much to forgiveness, to forgive ourselves, to forgive others. And in that way, we open the way to the Holy Spirit to come into our heart, because without forgiveness, we cannot be healed. We cannot be spiritually healed. We cannot be physically healed either. And we cannot be emotionally healed. We have to forgive. But in order for our forgiveness to be perfect and holy, a lady in a special way has been inviting us to the prayer with the heart. So many times she repeated, Pray, 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 dear children, pray. Not to pray with words. Not to pray mechanically. Not to pray and then check every once in a while the time and to see when is this prayer finally going to end? No. Our Lady invites us to find time for prayer. To find time for God. Because to pray with the heart that Our Lady, Our Mother, has been inviting us to. In the first place, it means to pray out of love and with love. To pray with your whole being. So that our prayer may truly become a meeting with Him, a having conversation with Him, having rest with Him. So when we finish the prayer said with the heart, we may be filled with joy and peace. Our Lady says, Dear children, let the prayer be joy for you. Pray with joy. Dear children, the one who prays should not be afraid of future. Dear children, dear children, if you desire to attend the school of prayer, then you have to know that in the school of prayer, there are no weekends free. Every day we have to attend the school of prayer. Dear children, if you desire to pray better, then you always have to pray more. Because to pray more is a personal decision. And to pray better is grace. Grace given to those who pray more. Often we say nowadays that we do not have time for prayer. 
We work too much. We are too busy. And when the time for prayer comes, when the time for us to be together in family comes, we always have problem with time. And Our Lady simply says, Dear children, no, don't always say that you don't have time. The time is not the issue, dear children. Time is not the problem. Problem is love. Because, dear children, if man loves or likes something, then he or she will always find time for that. And if one does not like or does not love something, or he or she will never then find a time for that. So you see, if there is love, everything is possible. The mother has come to us. She is waking us up from this spiritual coma that the world found itself in. She desires to strengthen us in faith and in prayer. This evening, during the apparition time, I am going to recommend all of you, all your needs, all your families, and in a special way, all the sick. All of you present priests and the parishes that you come from, I believe that we are going to answer to Our Lady's call, that we're going to accept her messages, and that we will become co-creators of a new, better, and more beautiful world, the world which is worthy of children of God. I do hope that during this time of your stay here, that you're going to plant here good seed and I hope that the seed that you're going to plant will fall on a good ground and that it will bring hundredfold fruit this time that we live in is the time of responsibility that's why with responsibility we should accept all what our mother has been inviting us to let us pray together for the evangelization of the world and the family. Let us all become a living sign. Let's not look for the signs, for the outside signs, for something to be touched, for something to be seen and then to be convinced. Our Lady asks of all of us today, she asks of us to be and become the living sign, the sign of the living faith. My dear friends, let it be so. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy may. Name thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a lovely day.